Yeah, just so welcome some everybody coffee. I'm ready to go. To the second talk of the series for the exhibitions of products of empire and ideas of practice uh, now on view at uh, Artshare LA in downtown Los Angeles until February 22nd, 2022. Today I have an awesome artist and an awesome guest and just a great person um, here today to talk about his works and was very excited to include him in the show. Um, my personal um, feeling about his works, and we'll get into more about that, is just like when I first saw them, it was exactly what was needed for the theme of the show. Um, um, I would love to, you know, just introduce, uh, if you don't know already, uh, Paul Juno. Um, welcome, Paul. Thank you so much for being here and taking the time to talk about your practice. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I'm psyched to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, of, of course, of course. So I want to start with, uh, you know, give everybody a background on, you know, how you got into creating the work that you do and, you know, what's your day-to-day -day life of as, as an artist? Sure. So uh, I've been into painting since I graduated college in 2013. I went to a art school in Colorado. I was lucky enough to be something I always wanted to do as a kid. I went and got an illustration degree at a uh, Remcad in Colorado. And uh, I moved out here to California with my then girlfriend, now fiance, uh, to like do the LA dream, you know, like and make it. And uh, for a while, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I was kind of in this purgatory limbo of uh, what kind of discipline I wanted to do. I went to, that's why I like my, my what I want to do as an artist, so I just do it all. So I'm like mediocre at everything. <laughs> but uh, I, I got into like splatter paint, which every artist does, you know, of course. Then I got into abstract, of course. And then I got into macro photography for a bit. Why at all? It, it's, I never captured me as a kid. I was totally into MC Escher surrealism. So mm. still life's bored me to tears. I don't, <laughs> as a kid, I was like, there could be way more to this image than just, you know, the realism that's at foot. I don't know what happened, but I got super into it. And now it's all I do is still lifes and observational paintings you know which is go into what we have in the in the show which is uh, observational interiors that's super it's super interesting <laughs> because i would figure you know like you said looking at your work that you were you base your practice in you know still life drawings and you know the practice of shapes and the practice of space um, and then to hear that story where you say you couldn't stand still lives, I think that's <laughs> hilarious, man. Like, uh, so what, do you, what do you think was? I have to include it, you know. What do you say? Sorry, yeah. What, <laughs> so yeah, I had to include that little tidbit of like it wasn't something I always enjoyed. It's something that just uh, you kind of have to embrace that sometimes. Most definitely. Well, what was the moment that you felt that embracing this style was the style for your uh, for your practice? You know what? It's one of those things where like I'll have artist block for a while. I, I'll I'll want to do something. You know, like I'll I have a vision of like, all right, I'm going to do this surrealist drawing. At the time, that's all I was doing was surrealist, which I still enjoy a lot now. But that's all I was doing. And uh, I would I would not want to do anything, and all of a sudden I would see like a in the jar of uh, colored pencils looks, and how the light is hitting it. I'm like, oh, that looks cool, and then I'll draw that, and I have way more fun drawing and depicting that mundane object than I did drawing this fantastical environment. You know that in wow. right in my head was like way more interesting to look at than a still life, but yet you know the still life, the mundane object was capturing my attention way more. And that would happen a lot. And I would just kind of like brush it aside because, you know, <laughs> I would post these things on my Instagram and you should never do things for your followers, but it hurts when you do things like 
you post up your normal stuff that gets like a normal reaction and then you post up your side gig that you like and it gets nothing you know yeah. you're just like holy cow um, okay you know <laughs> <laughs> and so you, you stop that, you're like all right i hear you and then maybe that was garbage other times you're like well that was still good so i'll just keep doing it in the dark 10 likes you know compared to like what i imagine it should get which is uh, you know, not the best attitude. Social media kind of rots your creativity. So I, I felt I've included because I felt more control of just being like, you know what, I'm gonna post up what I'm doing. You know, you could like I don't actually really, really care. Um, I did care, but now I don't care <laughs> about like the reaction. Like this is what I'm doing. I enjoy what I'm doing. I'm proud of it. And uh, it's gonna it's gonna go down different ways. You know, it's gonna be macro in imposter work one day and then it's going to be sculptures of fan art from an mmrp <laughs> i can't Hex. you know and and to stifle it would be a crime <laughs> you know? i agree i i totally agree <laughs> with that and i think i think that's super dope and like what has focusing on you know what you say is the mundane objects how has that helped you to see you know not only as an artist you know visiting exhibitions looking at work but being able to see into your vision into your paintings because like just looking at like red easel and morning light in the home like you're capturing what you would consider the mundaneness of every day so beautifully and so yeah <laughs> heavily saturated with beautiful color to where you're actually capturing each piece inside of the piece. I thought that was brilliant. Thank you. Uh, I, I will, I'll take that and, and, and go further with it. Um, so like Renaissance paintings, when I was in my class, always fascinated, fascinated with me, the paintings that like painted paintings, you know, as, as meta as that is, like the ones where they would like, you know, the artist would step back and they would paint like a hundred paintings. And if you zoomed in, you know, like each painting was delicately and lovingly painted and like re retraced into its accuracy. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's one of the coolest meta things like to do. And then to do it of your own work is also really fun. The room is essentially all my own, like it's a cocoon of my own work. So yeah. it's one of those things where it's taking that art history aspect, but like taking it down to, you know, my two bedroom home in NoHo and, and making it like, I, these are my works. This is the things I like to, to do. And the thing I crave most in a creative space is just a massive amount of textures and colors. And I would imagine that's how it felt when you were in those Renaissance places where it was just, you walk in, and back then they framed everything. My paintings not framed. So back then it was like they had gilded, you know, golded things. And it looked extravagant to like, you know, a sickening degree almost. It was, yeah. it was like too much. So I, I enjoy that too, where it's like the, every color is in each of these paintings. Literally like every yeah. single color you can imagine is like, and these paintings aren't that big. They're humble size. They're 11 by 17 or 20 by 24s. So they're, they're not huge, but they really, um, they each took a month to do. And then last on that is uh, the mundane. Usually these, this room is, me see it every day, so it doesn't surprise me, but ran light into the room. It's one of those, where I'm like, I am so lucky I get to have this spot right now. Like, um, yeah. I don't have a building obscuring the sun, you know, which could easily happen here in LA. Uh, yeah. For whatever reason, there's open space. So like, I have this room that has this, I don't have to use the light until it's dark, you know, in the, in the mm -hmm. studio room, which is a real blessing. Most I love using natural light instead of uh, a, a real light. Cause then I can actually use, you know, the sunlight to all of it, <laughs> or usually. And here in LA, it's always sunny, essentially. Uh, so I wanted to like, you know, like Vermeer paints with light. That's kind of what I wanted to do is both of them. The main character to me is the light, <laughs> like the light hitting the painting is the uh, next was uh, to, to capture for me personally, because I've never done that. And two, it, it's when it hits the room, it's to me the exciting part. So like walking in, having a full glass, a cup of coffee, uh, I imagine the viewer imagines themselves sitting on the chair in mm -hmm. the morning. 
by in the home studio and you just like that's what i do uh every morning it's just like all right what am i doing for the day and uh that's kind of what this it's why i really wanted these pieces in this show in particular is because it's this is my process i'm in here every day it's the background right now <laughs> like it's it changes every day i get excited just being like that painting should be over there that painting's in the closet now <laughs> like it's uh i enjoy that a lot the organizing of little trinkets it, that itself you know five minutes in now i'm thinking of the painting that i need to do later today like and i write it on a post-it note like it's all within the creative uh spirit and that's kind of what this is that painting you know is only three months old but all those paintings essentially moved now they're all in different spots <laughs> that room doesn't look like the room anymore which is kind of what i like about studios they're almost always in flux so like what you sound like you're doing you know is you know curating your studio to enhance your visibility of the work so in doing that is there certain or a certain work that you like in front of you or a certain color or a certain space to where that view puts you in the right mind to grab the right colors, to grab the right scenery? Is there a certain space in your studio that you know puts you in that moment? Absolutely. So that is the uh, red easel painting. Mm. Uh, you can you can kind of see, you can see it in the first, uh, what I did first, the first painting, the morning light in the home studio where on the left hand side, there's the red easel and then uh, there's a whole painting dedicated to that easel. Uh, I, I encountered that easel when I moved to North Hollywood, someone was selling it for, or my neighbor was selling it for 50 bucks. They just kind of wanted to get rid of it. And after I acquired it like six years ago, it's essentially where I paint, an amazing deal. <laughs> it was, it was uh, I painted it red just cause I always enjoyed uh, red easels for whatever reason it, it works and then I've used it ever since it's, it's every painting I've ever made at home it, it's made on that easel that's one and two it's all made standing up essentially on either a mat or I'm on a fatigue mat I don't like sitting I don't know why but sitting and drawing I get uh it, I pace I'm, I'm moving now I can't even sit during <laughs> this thing I gotta like I'm pay I, I gotta move it's just a part of who I am I've always noticed it I struggle in school if I had to sit and work I had to just like act like I smoked and go on smoke breaks yeah and just walk you, around. Gotta, you gotta move um, around literally. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah so what's important as an artist is to figure out what works for you I noticed that sitting doesn't work for me but standing does so the easel I, I put push pins up to where the painting needs to be and then I work from, from the morning to dusk standing uh working and it works it's uh for me I, I don't know why um, but it took me years to figure that out. That's a, that's a thing. Once you figure it out, use it. But it takes some time to, at least for me, to figure out the hacks. Like I work best in the morning. It's better to take a mini break in the afternoon. Yeah. Noon to walk the dog and go for a long jog. Go back to the studio, eat some dinner, repeat. I usually have three attempts at the studio every day. And those almost exact things if I have the day off, I've noticed. It's just... It's like clockwork, uh, unless I'm on the deadline and I got to work. But uh, and so I use those all those times to like maximize my my output of paintings. I'm pretty much a workaholic when it comes to these things. It's all I want to do. So during COVID, I've had a full time job and I enjoyed it. But every day I would imagine a life where I was able to paint at home all day long. And that was the weird gift, the weird silver lining of this entire time is I've been able to do murals to compensate myself and then use that savings to paint at home full time nice. it's a it's essentially a dream come true so instead of taking any time off i am like like essentially clocking in to my studio every day and wow. uh all the creativity books i've downloaded on audiobook throughout the years almost every single one the main thesis is you gotta do it every day <laughs> that's the mm -hmm. thesis no one knows where creativity comes from no one really knows how to hack it so much uh as you know i've off days it's not like it works all the time <laughs> yeah. it's uh it, it's it's uh it's hard to uh pan that gold every day but the one yeah. thing that does work is if you make the time and stay in your studio and at least like think about it usually something comes you know it may not be like you know all day long but something fruitful should come from that and it almost always does i've always seen it work and if it doesn't well you tried your best <laughs> you know and i feel oh, better that sure. i tried and didn't give up 
you know. No, that's, <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah. And, you know, and that consistency is what ultimately, you know, like we talk about, you ultimately dig and get to the goal, you know, just by keeping, you know, forward and digging and getting to it. Um, so, like, I think that's very interesting, in, like how you, you know, combine that Renaissance period with a very contemporary feel, especially with the saturation of color. I think that's like supremely amazing. Which one of these pieces um, do you think fully represents your preparation of going in the studio? It's it's actually probably, that's a tough one. The Red Easel one shows like my process completely. It shows uh, a painting in the process easel with palette of the paint that I always use with the Talenti jar that I use as my water cup <laughs> forever now. The thing is totally caked. And then uh, a pot cup on the desk. That one definitely shows my process more, but I will say morning light in the home studio, like when I finished it, I very rarely like pat myself on the back. I'm like, I did, that was a good one. You know, usually I'm, there's always a part of me like I could have done better, but I'm tired of this composition. So I'm done with it. Yeah. I was psyched about that one. Cause it did capture like my room. It captured when I walk into the room, it's like, all right, we're, we're ready. Here's like inspiration from past time. Usually the reason I have everything around me, uh, especially the newest paintings is to tell myself, all right, there's where you're at you know, technically, you got to mm. surpass that with the next painting. It's always mm. surpassed. So I, all my paintings, you know, I want to do better and better. Um, it's, you know, one of the things I always did with my paintings was have a black outline with everything. During the pandemic, I was like, all right, erase that. It's going to take it two weeks more, you know, to finish a painting, but I want realism. Yeah. And uh, it took a while and I hated the painting process for a long while because the mm. black outline for me was an easy crutch. I would work mm. full time. So when I got home, I was like, I, let's just black outline this thing and we're done with it. It looks fine. But if I take the time to make it look realistic, because I'm trying to depict realism, it's uh, I'm not only happier with it, but the painting looks better. It's all around. I am feel better as an artist. Now I can't imagine my paintings with it. So it's one of those things that like, that was a, um, what do you call it? A handicap that I kept, you know, a crutch mm -hmm. that I was like, all right, this, uh, you know, it's something, a toolkit that I'll use just to finish the painting. And now that I have all this ample time, it's like, we're going for this. We're doing, you know, we're going technical. We're seeing how far I can take this. Let's pinpoint the, uh, I pinpoint the colors and procreate. So I try to get the exact color maxed and mixed. That's also been fun. Yeah. So I like, I, I kind of geek out over these statements. I, I, I don't know if I said this, but each one must do. So each one is a month with at least eight hours a day on the painting. Like it's after a while, I don't know what you, but I get bored of the same image. I just want to move on. I don't want to keep working on it. Yeah. If it's midway through the month, I know it's taking the whole month. Like, dude, I, I don't want to clock in and work on it. It's just, it's, I know that that day it's not going to be done. Yeah. You know, it's only midway. The only exciting part's the beginning and the end. The midway, yeah. the whole way through is just, you got to do it. And then at the end, you're like, yeah, I did it. <laughs> you know? so, but you, <laughs> the whole way, so, middle way is boring. So with doing all of that and, you know, putting that time in and you know that it's, you know, taking the actual hours, you know, of your, you know, your man hours, your manpower. And also it's, you know, representative of those moments that you have, you know, and, this space that you're in, you know, eventually you'll have a new home, you know, bigger, you know, better family and things like that. And I guess the question I have, is it yeah. tough for you to be first creating these moments and then selling them? Because these are like almost time capsules right. in, in your life. You know what I mean? All right. Well, I mean, look at, yeah, I, was it? I, th I think it was Monet, but I'm probably attributing it to the wrong artist, but he said he keeps the best ones and he sell the others. <laughs> so mm. like some of them I'd rather not sell. And usually they don't. A lot of times I'd rather, if I'm making it, I, I want to look at it. It's like the yeah. giant uh, artist where he's like, I just gave birth to this thing. I want to keep it. Like, I love that quote so much because it's so true. Like when I finished, you know, both these paintings, I was like, yes, like this is where I'm at now as an artist 2022. 20, like now, now let's see where I can go from there. But, you know, after a yeah. year or so, like, 
you have to live with it. Usually it takes me about a year and I can sell, <laughs> sell a painting and feel good about it. If, yeah. if I need it for, you know, money is, is cool, but, uh, you know, especially living out here, you got to pay the bills, but like, it's, yeah. it's nice to make something and be proud of it and then just keep it around because it's yours. You're like, I own this cool object. No, most definitely. It's something I'm proud of. And, uh, I don't know. I, I always think eventually these things will find their homes. A lot of times, mm -hmm. uh, the right owner, the right person will own the painting usually in the end. It's usually yeah. a friend, hopefully, uh, even if it's a stranger, at least it's living in a home and hopefully not in storage, you know, in darkness forever. That's another reason I love to keep it for a while. At least it's hanging in my house and I get to look at it and it lives. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, selling, selling a thing is the hardest. I will admit that it's if he sold, I'd be happy, but inside I'd be like, oh, I'm not, I now can only see it through JPEG. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> that was phone. that was because uh, I'm be sure not question. making it again. <laughs> yeah, that was going to be my next question. You know, it's like, is what is that if it does sell, like, how does how do you think you would feel? Like, you know, like, would it would it would it crush you inside for these to leave I, you? <laughs> you know, you know. <laughs> so these two paintings i prepped for this show so i'd be psyched if either sold i i've shown in so many shows and i never i never sell and i'm not saying that to be like petty i'm just saying that as like a my stuff usually doesn't sell so i just enjoy showing it to me showing it is great because then i look around like this during the show every time i turned the corner there was like a group of people looking at it not to like nice. you know bring myself up but every time i looked at it it was like you know in my head i was like yeah dude like now people get to see the details spent a month on you know so that's the exciting part the selling it is cool too because i also like i would love to see the little red dot you know one day yeah. on the uh on the painting but uh the fact that people get to see it in person right now excites me that's the cool thing uh and if it sells that's that would also be cool but it's not like the main objective no, Especially totally, when you show. totally do you always that. just want people to see it. Most definitely. Like, so what, what, you know, our, our, our final question for the day is like, what are you excited about for the future of your practice and looking forward in the work that you do? So I, I love doing murals. Murals are kind of what pays the bills for me. Thankfully, I took me a long time to figure out, how to like join that mural world. But uh, I would love to see these type of paintings just magnified. I'm morning light in the home studio, like on the side of a building painted, yeah. you know, and it, it looks like the interior of a room. There's artists in Europe that do it, that do like interiors that look like old paintings. I'm always amazed. There's also artists out here that do that too, but like it's in Europe. And I would see like my, my style of, interiors or uh you know 21st century stuff on you know magnified i that's like to go so like taking that kind of genre and uh painting it for the public because that's also another part of exhibiting that's the mm -hmm. thing i love about murals is uh you know the public just peripherally sees it every day the locals do at least and it just okay. lives there and at least it's not like a billboard for coca-cola or a yeah, right. mcdonald's you know it's something you know it's something nice it's something it's it's just at least you know art in it regard it's at least some image that's not trying to sell you a product yeah <laughs> and that's um, always a good thing i think no i definitely hear you i definitely hear you and, and agree a hundred percent Paul, thank you so much, man, for, you know, speaking with me today and, you know, first just being in the exhibition. Like I said, I'm a huge fan of what you do. Um, I think it's only going to get better. I can't wait to see what you do with larger canvases. It'll probably take you about six to seven months, but you know, <laughs> I, will. <laughs> you know, I would love to be one of the people that get a chance to really look and see the detail of what you would do with something large. Um, and I'm just excited, you know, for the future of your practice, man. I think you have a lot of dope potential, brother. And I'm, I'm just excited to have a chance to work with you, man. I appreciate it. 
right on, man. That's that was awesome. I appreciate you. This show was great, and I, I couldn't have been happier with being in this show. It was amazing the curation that day. <laughs> like just seeing that, you know, the uh, opening show was amazing. So I, I appreciate you as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, brother, and thank you so much for everyone that's tuning in um, in the Zoom and also via the recording. Um, you can visit the, the exhibition Ideas of Practice at ArtShare LA until February 20th, 2022, I'm sorry. And you can also check out more from Paul at uh, Paul Juno Art. Um, and yeah, you can always check out his work and see all the great stuff from him. So <laughs> thank you all so much. And thank you again, Paul. Thank you so much. I had a great time. Thank you. Peace, Thank man. You. Have a great Bye. one.